Hi and welcome to another MoTeC webinar. My name is Pete Swinney and today's subject is how to set up and tune idle control in an M1. I'm going to split this webinar or split this subject into a couple of webinars. It's quite a large subject. Idle control is not that easy and uh, there's a significant number of things to uh, configure and get right in an M1 in order for it to work. If you do get that right, it is uh, it does work very very well. And uh, today we're going to focus mainly on ignition-based control, uh, which may suit a lot of uh, the types of engines you guys are doing that don't have drive-by-wire or or idle air bypass solenoids on them. So the idle system controls the engine speed when the engine is under idle conditions. And what that means is the idle state is enabled and that's an important first point to keep in mind. Uh, a lot of people have problems either getting the idle control to work or to get it uh, the, the system to enable and so it's a good idea to have it on all your worksheets and on all your uh, I2 analysis sheets to keep an eye on whether the idle state is enabled and the system is actually active or not. Um, after you've got it active then you can obviously begin tuning it and dealing with um, it behaving the way you want. So the, generally the speed, the engine speed is controlled by varying both the ignition timing and the air mass through the engine. So that's a full system. So in modern vehicles with drive-by-wire motors or with air bypass solenoids, the uh, modern or an OEM will use both of those methods to control the speed of the engine. Now the air mass can come from a couple of different sources, like, like we said, drive-by-wire, throttle, um, a duty cycle based air bypass solenoid or a stepper motor. So today's webinar is going to cover engines with no electronic controlled air mass system. So in other words, it's just um, an engine like a V8 supercar, boat engine, V8 twin turbo, anything like that that's um, got no, no electronic control of airflow. Right, so how does it work? Uh, it's fairly simple. Basically, if you add and subtract timing, you add and subtract power. And there is a uh, control loop in the ECU that you tune that controls proportional and integral to add and subtract timing to get the idle where you want. So to have the engine speed meet the aim. Now, I just did a quick log and I've shown you a capture down here uh, of a very simple uh, control going on. So if we look where the mouse is here, uh, the engine's entered idle control and we can tell where the cursor is actually, It's the idle state has gone from disabled to enabled. And that's happened when the engine speed has actually met the aim, see the idle aim in blue. At that point, uh, the engine speed's been a little high, so the ignition timing goes from its um, preset target and starts going down to try and bring the idle speed down. At the point at here where the mouse is, where the engine speed is crossed through and is now underneath the aim, you'll see the timing is starting to ramp back in again. Now I have purposely made all the um, control um, parameters very uh, slow so you can see this happening slowly so you get an idea. In reality when you use it on a real engine it goes very fast and you don't get to see this happening spread out over a long period of time. So we have the timing ramping back in and the speed, uh, engine speed coming back up. So as that engine speed comes back up and crosses over and becomes too high the timing then comes back out trying to pull it back down and that's you know effectively how it works. So, uh, as I said earlier, the system's quite complex. Uh, it, it gives you the ability to achieve absolute OEM idle functionality, which we've never had the ability to do before. Uh, there are many, many tables, but there's not too many parameters that you need to have configured correctly to get the thing to work um, reasonably well. Now there's some significant help on this and the guys have made a, a great job of putting that help in but that's not on every page. So the best way to find all the help on the idle control is to highlight the idle aim channel which you can find on the engine systems workbook in the idle aim worksheet. So if you click on there and then press F1 
there's a significant amount of help of how the idle system works. It's detailed and the idea of this webinar is to try and simplify that into the parameters you need to worry about to get started. So the workflow. The first thing to do before you even start the, the thing is to get the idle control parameters to their default values. We put a reasonable amount of effort into putting what we think is acceptable starting points in the help so you might as well use them. They're not going to suit every engine but they should be a good starting point. Uh, in that setup you'll also find the idle mode and we want to just disable that at this early point. Alright so the next thing after that is to tune the engine at all idle speeds below and above aim idle. Alright so this is a normal thing to do for idle control. If you're going to be idling at 600 revs and the engine was to dip to 500, we need to know that the air fuel ratio at 500 is pretty close. Otherwise, the idle system is going to struggle to keep the engine going if, if it did end up at 500 and there's a ridiculously lean or ridiculously rich area in the map there. So it should all be smooth and if you possibly can manually bring it down to those uh, lower engine speeds and tune them properly. Now the thing I want to highlight here is don't play idle control tricks in your ignition table at this point. What we want here is to have the maximum torque timing in the ignition table at all locations including at idle. Alright so and in most cases for most engines that's going to be numbers ranging between 13 and 25 at each engine speed. So around where the engine might idle 850 RPM something like that depending on whether it's a Japanese engine versus an old Chev or something you, you're going to have different numbers but what you want to do is have it sitting there idling and start with a retarded number, keep adding ignition until the engine idles as fast as it's going to idle. Alright, so when you add more timing it doesn't bring the engine speed up, that means it's not making any more torque, that means that's the number you're going to use. So just the same as making full power, but you, make, you just think of it making full power at idle. And that's going to be our upper limit that we will use in the idle control system, but you'll see a little bit more now. So if you don't know where to start, start at 15 degrees, 15, 16 degrees and that's probably going to be pretty close. Alright, so uh, again we want to stress, go through and set all the idle control parameters up at the default settings. The number of times I've been personally caught not having done that, uh, take the time, go through, study the help. It's a good, good uh, exercise for reading the help and entering those numbers. Alright, so if you go to worksheet 3, which is idle ignition, so we might just flick across to the software now. Okay, so um, I might just go through those parameters quickly here and uh, give you a really quick explanation on them, um, for the ones that are critical at least. So we are in the engine systems workbook, so that's number 4 workbook, and we'll start with idle aim. There's only sort of two or three things you need to get right here. Air conditioning, we'll deal with that later. Post start idle, we can deal with later. Idle aim, that's a channel. See, there's a squiggly line there and no parameter. The idle aim main, here's the icon for the table. So this is where you're going to enter what your idle aim is long term. Now, we'll come, we're going to be coming back to this and putting in different numbers. So don't get too stressed about filling this out properly yet. Idle aim compensation, that's just a, a channel at the moment. Ramp down is a channel. Here is the ramp down delay and we'll come and talk about this later. Basically this is 200 milliseconds at the moment that the uh, idle will wait at its upper ramp limit before it ramps down to the main idle uh, aim value. The ramp down rate is 500 RPM per second and again we'll talk about this more and the ramp idle ramp down limit is 500. This is probably one of the most important ones. Again we'll come back and talk about it but uh, start with 500 and what basically what it means is if you've got say uh, 800 RPM idle when you exit idle control give the engine a rev it, it adds 500 RPM to that idle aim when you leave. When the engine speed falls back down, it will, it, the new idle aim will be, become 800 plus this 500, so that's 1300. 
it will then hold that 1300 for 200 milliseconds and ramp down that 500 in one second. You'll see some of that happening uh, shortly. All right, an idle active activate throttle pit throttle pedal threshold. All right, so basically idle control is not going to be active until it goes under this number 1.5 in this case with a that's a plus minus a hysteresis of 0.1%. And the in engine idle activate engine speed margin basically says it's got to be it kicks in the ignition retard uh, when the engine speed is falling a thousand above the idle aim. Let's not get too worried about that yet. The rest we'll cover at a later time. So off to our ignition, uh, our idle ignition worksheet. So these are the numbers here that you need to tune to get this right, and there's not many. If you arrive at this page and you've got all of this, you'll see this is all the channels and it may look a little daunting so just click on the channel uh, icon there and now they're all gone. Idle aim main, well we've already dealt with that. Idle ignition timing limit advance ramp. Basically this tells us how quickly the timing is going to ramp in and out from the main timing into the idle timing. Um, again we'll talk about this a little bit more later. Uh, the target advance, this is the timing that you're aiming for when you are in idle control. We'll cover that some more. Basically it needs to be halfway between your minimum timing and your maximum timing in idle. And your maximum timing in idle is your ignition timing main from your main table and your minimum timing is this value here. Now, Alright, so when in idle control we need to move the timing or the ECU moves the timing backwards and forwards to control the engine speed. So it needs some limits to that. The upper limit of that is the ignition timing main table. So no matter what happens you can't put any, it won't put any more timing than what's in the main timing table. So if we actually have a quick look at this now for this ECU. Alright, so right now I'll just bring the RPM down via the simulator. Let's come down a little bit. Alright, so at 850 RPM this has got 16 degrees in the timing table. Now if we were to add more timing than that it wouldn't pick up any speed. So you can sort of see why this is important to get this at the maximum torque timing because this is the upper limit that the idle control system will use. So it gets 16 degrees of advance to make maximum engine speed and it gets the minimum in this case minus 10. So it gets 26 degrees of timing swing to control the idle gets all the way back to minus 10 and all the way up to whatever is in this table. All right. Now there's a nice little uh, picture here to explain that. So what we're saying here at the upper limit is the ignition timing normal from the ignition timing table. So that is the best torque ignition timing. So that's the black line. So this is before top dead center. And as you retard the timing you get make less and less power and the engine speed goes slower and slower. So you get to choose the most retarded that you allow the engine to go to. So in an extreme condition the engine could be sitting there idling at minus 10 and you've got to be happy that that's okay because of exhaust temperature and things like that. Alright now uh, you get to choose an aim where it should try, you should try and have the ignition timing under normal conditions sit and what that should be halfway between your minimum and what you can get out of your, the maximum which is your ignition timing main table. So and you know you can split the two numbers in half or you can calculate it based on true torque it's up to you but you should set yourself uh, an advanced target so that when it enters idle control this is where it will go. Now this is particularly important when we start introducing the drive-by-wire motor but we'll come back to why you would use this, why it's going to be important even on a manual throttle body. 
so let's just get it the basic setup to start with so um, you could start with minus 10 if you if you think oh no, that's too you know I don't want it on my timing back that far then you might go to minus 5 or 0 or, or minus 20 it's up to you you're the tuner you can make the decision on that so the next is the proportional gain so what I'm going to tell you is that this entire strategy can work on just proportional gain and it works very well with that so uh, there are a number of uh, webinars on our PID systems and what what is proportional and integral and derivative and uh, we're not going to cover them now but basically the greater the error the more proportional the more the proportional gain affects the decision to make a change uh, now I have at the moment got my proportional set to zero and some integral set to four now that is simply because I'm going to show you using the simulator how the timing changes when we go to put this on an engine uh, we're going to use a number of something like 250 and you'll see that coming up in a minute all right so that's that's basically it uh, you get to look at your ignition timing table also on this worksheet so let's go back to the presentation so ignition timing limit advance target halfway between the main table and the minimum parameter you can press F1 on each of those uh, parameters to get a, a bigger explanation but we've just talked about that the ignition idle ignition timing limit advance minimum which is the most retarded that you're happy to allow the system to use you want to set as low as possible so the system the idle control will work uh, a lot better if you give it a lot more room to move and therefore a lot more control of engine power your only worry or concern is your exhaust temperatures so um, OEMs generally I'm told use somewhere between minus 15 and minus 10 uh, as their limits uh, that may not be appropriate to your engine but that's that's kind of what they're using in a stock engine all right so we want to set the idle ignition timing limit advanced proportional gain that's more than a mouthful again press F1 to get the explanation but start with it at 250 the system will work at 250 uh, it probably is a little high but it will work and I'll show you some stuff uh, some differences between a high and a low proportional number in a minute so you want to start with a nice high number and have it work aggressively and work well and then you can bring the nu number down to smooth out the ignition timing and smooth out your idle uh, your engine speed the, at idle all right and idle ignition timing limit advanced control integral gain you want to set it to zero I can't think of uh, an engine that I've had to use that with and it's to the point where I don't even I almost think that it's it shouldn't be there so there may be some scenarios where you need some but for now to keep it simple just leave it at zero all right so tuning we operate the system we keep an eye on the idle status uh, we change the idle aim and check the response but first of all to get it into idle control give the engine a rev let it drop down and make sure the idle then enables and I think you'll find if you've got everything set up right it will just work straight away so we're revving the engine up and down seeing how well it follows our ramp and then what we do and this is the critical part and the success of the whole thing is we adjust our throttle body so the ignition timing is at the target point now I'll show you what I mean by some of this stuff so first of all I'm going to show you the system working and we're working with a simulator here and so I'm manually increasing and decreasing engine speed and as I said earlier I've got the the control parameters back right down so everything happens slowly so we press highlight this graph and then press F6 we get it to go to full screen so currently uh, we have our engine speed at a it's above the aim and our idle state is enabled and the throttle aim state is pedal so at the moment the the throttle is being controlled by the pedal but we're actually not going to talk about that because that's a drive-by-wire thing so our ignition timing is minus 10 and that must be because the idle control is enabled let me lift the throttle and so the moment I lifted the throttle 
the ignition timing went to the ignition timing main table now I'll just bring that on I'll just uh, press T here and pause this so if I click here and then push C for channels I can bring on my ignition main ignition main ignition timing main so this is the ignition timing from the main table it's not necessarily the ignition timing the engines getting now I can double click that or just drag it on like this right so this is the this gives us the number that is being output from the ignition timing table the ignition timing itself this is the bit that the engine is getting uh, is receiving if you like is this is the green all right I press T and start it again all right so at the moment uh, we've got an inlet manifold pressure of 40 our throttle position let's just bring this down like this 12 and our engine speed will make it a little bit higher okay do you notice that as soon as I came up the idle aim came up now we'll just pause this again and we'll bring up the idle aim main see for channels idle idle aim main so this is the result of the idle aim main table so whatever you enter into the idle aim main table is in green here so the idle aim main table we have 680 and the actual idle aim is the result of all the compensations post start compensation cold start compensation the ramp and everything affects the end result of what the idle aim actually is just press T again so here we go uh, our ignition timing at the engine is coming from the ignition timing main you can see that because it's sitting on top there I'll get rid of this throttle aim state and the idle state will leave there don't need the manifold pressure so the key thing is here first of all obviously you're cruising along the first thing you want to do to enter idle control is drop the throttle so we'll bring that down throttles dropping down just pause that now now we're not in idle control yet because the idle speed has to be below the idle aim and I probably haven't stressed that uh, enough for you idle control will not be entered until the engine speed drops below the idle aim what does happen though is that it immediately uses the moment it sees that there is no throttle the system knows that you want to de the engine is to deaccelerate so in order to get it to deaccelerate the ignition timing drop down to the ignition timing advance target all right so that advance target parameter that you entered the moment the throttle got underneath the parameter that says to enable idle control it went to the advance target and this helps to pull the engine down more than the well to assist the engine decreasing in speed um, more than the just closing the throttle all right so the throttle is closed and the engine starts to deaccelerate to help it deaccelerate under the aim the ignition timing is uses the advanced target to pull that down so our advanced target setting was seven so now we will just press T again now the engine speed will come down so we bring the engine speed down nice and slowly got a wobbly pot on my engine speed all right whoops I didn't do that very successfully let me just do this with a slow all right start again as our engine speed up and oh, we've come out of idle control let me just bang the throttle up again back to where we were sorry for confusing you see the timing ramp back in there because I've the throttle has come up so it's clicked out of the idle control one of the idle control parameters now we'll start again bring down the throttle timing comes down to minus seven now the engine speed is coming down and boom and we'll just show that happening there okay we'll just freeze that so idle uh, throttle went down to underneath the threshold which I think we had set at 1.5 the moment it did that the timing came down to the target timing if 
All right, so the ignition timing goes away from the main table, the blue line, down to tar target timing. At this point, we are not in idle control yet. It's just trying to get the engine speed to come down into idle control. So down comes the engine speed. Now, the moment the engine speed goes under the aim, the idle system becomes enabled then the, this is at the top of what you would call a ramp. At this point the ramp starts to come down. Now we had our ramp coming down uh, and we had a 500 ramp which you can see there 680 to plus 500 to 1180 and that ramp that 500 rpm was coming down at 500 rpm per second so over one second the rpm or oh, sorry the idle uh, aim comes down all right and at this particular point, of course, the, the engine speed is well above the idle aim, so the timing starts to come out. Now, I've got a very, very slow parameter, a slow integral to uh, bring the timing back, so that's why the timing has you know, slowly come down. All right, we can adjust this and we'll redo the test if you want to see it. All right, and, but at the point that the engine speed meets the idle aim again, the system's already active, the timing is starts to ramp back up again. Alright, so if I press T, ooh, freeze that, you missed it, let's come back. Alright, All right, so here's the part we were looking at. Now, what was happening while I was talking to you, the integral was pulling the timing back in, trying to fix the error. So the engine speed was under the aim, all right, so there was an error there of whatever, 100 and something revs. And so the timing was pulling, putting timing back in again. The computer's adding timing, adding timing, trying to get the engine speed up. Of course, it's doing nothing because it's on my simulator. And it gets to the point well, where it gets to 16 degrees, which is what the ignition m timing main number is, and it can't do any more about it. So that's as much as the system can do. All right. So if I bring the uh, engine speed above, if I bring it well above, you'll see the timing starting to come out. Now that's terribly slow and of course this wouldn't work on a real engine. Alright, so I'll leave that there. I'll just press F6 to decrease there. We'll take the integral. Uh, I, can, uh, I can multiply the integral by a fair amount. Let's put uh, 50 in there. Right, so an integral parameter is a time-based parameter. Basically, the the longer it's uh, the longer it's an error, the more it, the more work it does. It's probably a simple way of trying to explain it. Uh, so we go back to here. So it's gone and ramped the timing back in, trying to fix the error. So now we'll make it go above the aim, at which point it'll it should pull the timing out. So we'll go. A little bit up and so now you can see with the integral pumped up a bit it happens faster so I'm only a couple of hundred above the aim but it still took quite a while I'll just show you something how to measure T to, to freeze it so if I put that there and press the space bar that starts the um, Delta feature and I can move this is like a scope and I can see that took 3.8 seconds if you see down the bottom here from there to there, press D to get rid of it. All right, now I'll show you what happens if we give give it uh, some real parameters that you would put in an engine. So we press T to get that to go again. F6 to shrink that. Whoops, F5 I pressed. Let's go back to engine systems. Right, so now what I'm telling you, you guys to use is zero integral. and 250 but even at 50 uh, a pr proportional of 50 this will be right aggressive and you can see it just stepped massively there so that's 50 degrees per thousand rpm error it's a simple it, it does a simple calculation actually so for every thousand rpm error it moves the timing 50 degrees. If the error is 100 RPM, well it moves it 5 degrees. So if the error is 200, it'll move it 10 degrees. So, uh, highlight that, F6, 
Now let's have a look. But it doesn't correct any of it over time. It's only a straight correction based on the error and then after that it's done. It doesn't fix over time. That's what the integral does. So our engine speed is currently a little high so we bring it down and we'll watch the timing change. Alright so basically as we go up and down you can see it moves quite quickly. Alright so if we're hunting up and down like this the timing will do the same. Now in reality that that actually works quite well. Alright you can see how it operates. Alright and T to stop. So when we're above the aim the timing is out. When we're below the timing comes back in and proportional to the amount we are above will be proportional to the amount of timing it pulls out. Now I believe our setting was uh, min our maximum was minus 10 so if we get high enough on our engine speed it will just go to minus 10. Boom there you go. Alright and straight away it reacts as quick as that. So that's bouncing up and down from maximum to minimum and high proportional numbers will do that. But what, what tends to happen is the moment the engine speed goes above the timing reacts that quickly that it pulls pulls it in the right direction and stops it from overshooting and it ends up um, being ends up doing quite a good job. T. Right so what I've got here is I've got some logging from an engine, a real engine, so something for you to have a look at uh, and look at some of these parameters working on a you know on a proper engine. So uh, here's some, I did some experimenting with some different ramp rates here so let's go through what we've got. Purple is the engine speed itself, the idle aim is the uh, I'm going to call it brown but it's uh, whatever it is, some sort of green. Normal green, idle aim main. Alright, so that's the um, that's the output of the idle aim table. Okay, so you can see if we just look here uh, the engine speed is in idle control and it is pretty much, engine speed itself is pretty much smack on hovering up and down over the actual aim itself which is 1400. Okay, now if we look down to the next, the ignition uh, panel, so green is the actual ignition timing that the engine is is uh, receiving, the pinky colour here, idle ignition timing limit advanced target, so this is the target that we set, now I think we've been using the example of 7, in this particular engine it was 6 degrees. So basically we're saying we'd like the timing to be hovering around 6 degrees while we're in idle control so that if the idle goes down for any reason, the engine starts to slow down, we have from 6 all the way up to our main timing uh, out of our ignition main, in this case it's 13 degrees, and all the way down to our minimum, and in this case I think it was minus 5, but we can have a look, I'll zoom out. Oh. It'll have hit it here. Oh, it's not obvious yet. All right, so just want to highlight in on these two tests. All right, so I've made the lines thicker to help you look at this webinar, so then they, they look a bit ugly when they're two pixels wide, and some of it's not uh, actually logged as fast as what I would like. The ignition time is only logged at 20 hertz, but it's certainly good enough to sh to show you what goes on. So. Um, let's go through it. So here it is operating in idle control. The idle state's enabled because our throttle pedal uh, or the throttle position is zero. The moment we touch the throttle the idle control goes off and the ignition timing resumes to be off the main. So the ignition timing main 13 you see the ignition timing goes from uh, the, idle, the idle control ignition timing and reverts to the main main timing map. All right, and then that, as we rev the engine up, it follows a normal timing curve from your ignition map. Okay. Now, as we rev the engine up, the ramp, the idle ramp parameter adds adds uh, idle aim to the idle main, so it's getting ready to receive the 
engine speed as, as it falls next time we let our foot off the throttle. Alright, so our idle ramp was 500, so that have an idle aim of 1400 in this case. This is uh, it's actually an LS engine with a big cam in it and uh, multi-throttle bodies. So uh, our idle aim is now 1900 and what we've done here is we've given the throttle pedal, we just gave the throttle position a bit of a kick and to click it up, it went up to 3000 revs, backed off the throttle, it's now down at zero and it comes down. Now this had a engine speed parameter of 500 from memory which basically says once we're within 500 RPM of the aim, let's have a look, we should be able to work this out, give or take, alright so the aim's 1900 at 24 so that's probably right, at 500 RPM it pulls the ignition timing down it enters the ignition control part of the, of the idle control, the ignition, and the ignition timing comes down to the target. So within 500 RPM of it reaching idle control, ignition timing drops down to 6 degrees. All right, that helps to reduce and pull the idle speed down or the engine speed down. And then once it hits, once it, the moment it hits the aim, which was 1900 in this case, Alright, once it gets to the aim, the idle control goes to enabled. Alright, now the idle state must be logged slow there, only at 10 hertz. Alright, so it would have gone up a little faster than that, but it's a log too slow for you to see it. So, once that crosses underneath the aim, that ramp starts coming down. So that's coming down at 500 RPM per second from memory on this one. And you will see the timing controlling how the engine speed is falling. So as the engine speed, it wants to stop the engine speed falling too quickly and have it ramp down nicely to save it stalling. So you see the timing moving up and down to try and maintain, and it's doing a really good job of it here. Despite the timing going all over the place here, alright, see all over the place, it's maintaining a very good control on that ramp down. See it's, you know, it's within 10 or 20 RPM. Alright, so that ramp comes down, that's the aim value coming down and eventually gets back to our 1400. Okay, so the 1400 is then maintained just through the ignition being varied up and down and you'll see it sitting there beautifully. Alright, and the timing just goes up and down to maintain that. So in this particular case I actually changed that ramp down feature and went from 500 RPM per second to 250 RPM per second. So what that meant was we went, um, uh, the ramp down just took twice as long. So here we are, we've given it another blip on the throttle down the bottom, goes out of idle control, timing revs up, follows the main timing, then the engine starts falling when we let off the throttle, gets to the point here where it's 500 away from the idle aim then the timing drops down to the target timing of 6 degrees so you can see the green channel falling down here to 6 to pull it down at the point where the, the engine RPM drops below the idle aim it enters idle control and at that point the engine is falling below the aim and see what the timing's done it's it's trying to fix the problem, it says, oh, I'm trying to get this to uh, up to the aim, and so the timing, which is the green, is smashed up against as high as it can go, which in this case is, uh, well, 12.9 is, is as much as, is, as this ignition timing map has in it. All right, eventually it starts heading towards getting to the aim, it starts backing the timing down, and then it varies the timing up and down to meet the aim. All right. So, if you have a look at the, this log file, you can see lots of tests. But basically, it it is doing a little bit of overshoot falling. Basically, because it can't do enough, it put it puts the maximum amount of timing it can, but that's not enough to hold the RPM up and to stop it falling. What it actually needs is the drive by wire motor to open hot more if it had a drive-by-wire motor to preempt that higher aim idle. 
All right, but that's as much as an idle control can do. But we're asking a lot of it there. It's got decreasing engine speed, and we're asking it to hold up for a long period of time and uh, not to fall when it's already falling at quite a fast rate. Okay. All right, so hopefully a bit of that sunk in and you get the idea of what's required. Now, here's the thing. What you want to do with a manual throttle body is once you're in idle control so let's just go to this part here we're sitting here and it's maintaining the idle idle beautifully and in this particular case because of already this throttle body's already been adjusted the i the timing is hovering around the uh, six degrees that we're after I mean it's not it's not dead steady on that and you're not going to be able to get that to happen um, and still have it respond well but if you have a look this has got a big cam in it and look how um, how tight that engine speed is held around the idle aim okay so I'll just zoom in on it here all right all right so the lowest it's dropping it's going up and down yeah, sort of plus minus 50 rpm but this is uh, as I say it's got a big cam engine and um, this system will make a big difference to those types of engines just using this ignition based control all right so if you did this on your engine and the thing was uh, say idling at where the ignition timing was 12 degrees average 12 say bouncing from you know 8 to 12 8 to 13, 8 to 16, something like that, and your target was 6 degrees, what you'll do while it's happily idling here is simply open the throttle body slowly and the idle speed won't change but the ignition timing will start to come back. Alright, so as you open the throttle body a little bit, the ignition timing will, well the engine speed will start to go up but the ignition timing will come back and that will decrease the engine speed so you can literally just sit there and open the throttle body and the engine speed will just be the same All right so you want to end up with a throttle setting that has you the idle hovering around the ma the uh, target timing now you, what you'll have to be careful of while you do this is that you don't open the throttle body to a point where the 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 pedal well, not the pedal, but the throttle sensor goes above your uh, activate parameter and click it out of idle control. So you've got a couple of choices there. You can either make your activate parameter, for this particular test anyway, higher, or you can re-zero the throttle at the new, uh, at the new position. All right, so that's pretty much it. It's, it actually is remarkably easy once you get those few parameters right. Now our next webinar we're going to talk about the ignition, uh, the transient in and out of ignition, but I just want to show you that working here. Uh, one of the things when you go out of idle control is how quickly the ignition timing transients from its current location into back to the normal main table. Alright, now again because the log rate's slow on this, it's uh, this actually should have dropped down here we can see exactly where this is the last data point at which the idle state was enabled so somewhere between here and here it actually clicked out so uh, at somewhere around say this location it clicked in fact it's exactly here right there so the idle uh, your ignition timing ramp in and out of idle control is this slope here. Now uh, there's a couple of reasons just to plant this seed at this point why you would want to change this. To have a smooth transition out of idle you can have a slow ramp to bring this from you could be at minus 10 degrees at this point so to go from minus 10 to 13 if you did that quickly then you would feel a small snap on the as you want if you were driving this on the street and you would get a small kick because the instantaneous timing change but if you are wanting to uh, accelerate very quickly for a drag race or something like that then you don't want a laggy response here and if you had minus 10 and a very slow ramp you would prob most likely get a backfire so you can tune that parameter to help improve the response that suits 
the way this engine's being used and that's the whole key thing with all this M1 um, parameters and tables is that we don't know what you're going to use this for and depending on how it's being used will depend on you know how you program this all right let just me check and make sure we haven't forgotten anything else no that's it so the key thing is uh, check your your status and make sure you're always in idle control no point in tuning it unless you are you can check your uh, the response of the system by by changing the aim actually that's something we didn't do uh, I'll quickly show you that easiest way to do that is probably on the simulator so press T and we go F6 so the, the way to see how well the system responds is to go to the idle aim main and simply highlight around the area that you're running at and aim up and down from where you are so maybe 1000 press enter and you see the idle aim change to 1000 and you I'll just freeze that put this up here so you can see the moment I made that step change in the idle aim so the idle aim main went from 680 to 1000 the ignition timing which was hovering around 6.8 degrees went straight away to 16 to try and get the engine speed there so you check the response of the system aim up aim down aim up aim down and see what actually happens to the engine speed alright that's it for now so um, hopefully you'll tune in for the next webinar and good luck with that